Hare Krishna, looks like I'm the first one. Hare Krishna, Runi Mataji, Dandat Pranam, Jai Prabhupada. Happy Kartik. Uh, I'm the first one. Varshana Mataji had messaged uh, 40 minutes ago saying when is class because I think uh, she didn't know about the clock. She so, knows about the clock. She, she wrote it down yesterday. <laughs> oh, I maybe mean, forgot. And then I messaged her and I said it'll be in 40 minutes, but uh, I don't think she's seen that message either. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's eight o'clock for her. Somebody did the math, you remember? Kathy Mataji was doing the math that it'll be 8 p.m. Oh. Last night. She was yeah, but she had come on at uh, at the old time. And yeah, said, she does it. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. At that age, you know, we have to be just a little bit more. <laughs> uh, just be cognizant that they do it. And um, so I'm going live on Facebook, uh, Rani Mataji. Okay. And happy Kartik. So you made it. I'm going to the temple today. Are you? Did you register it, right? Like that? Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So uh, let's get going because I have a heart swap. So you will get to read as much as you want to your heart swap <laughs> then today. <laughs> usually, usually devotees have this like, I didn't get enough time to read. So now you can read as much as you want. Is there anyone on Facebook? I'm just going to Facebook here on my cell phone to see who else who's there on Facebook. And I need to reduce the sound on my phone, else you'll hear double comments. <laughs> Somebody, okay. Oh, Varshana yes, Mataji is on. It's coming up. Okay. Dhanvat Pranam, Dilibai Patel Prabhu, happy Kartik. So, this is known as over enthusiasm. <laughs> you were ready half an hour ago. Okay, so today is a hard class, 625. I have a hard stop. So I just want to make sure that we do everything. And we have Poni and Anija and Himlata Mataji as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining this call here today. And so what do we do on Kartik? We will today, we will do Bhagavad Gita and... Um, Anamati is going to tell me which chapter, chapter are you going to do? She has been waiting for such a long time. 12 chapters. 12 chapters. She's been <laughs> waiting for three days to come and sync with us here in USA so that we do the same chapter. Okay. And I need to make Thank sure you reading. And Neil by Neeral Prabhu, Dandar Pranam Jai Prabhupada. So the reading order today, Neeral Prabhu, is Aruni Mataji. She came in first, followed by Varshana, and then followed by you and Kathy. Uh, if Kathy is there to read, um, and then you can take it on from here. In yes, the interest of time, I'm just getting started here with a short prayer to the spiritual master. Om Agyanandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Gina Tasme Shi Guru Venamaha. Okay, over to Aruni Mataji to give us two translations. Devotional service. Text one. Arjuna inquired, which are considered to be more perfect, those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested? Text two, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, those who fix their minds on my personal form and are always engaged in worshiping me with great and transcendental faith are considered by me to be most perfect. Hare Krishna, text three and four. But those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies, that which uh, uh, lies beyond the perception of the senses, the all-pervading, inconceivable, unchanging, fixed, and immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone. Such persons engaged in the welfare of all 
at last achieve me. Text five. For those whose minds are attached to unmanifested, impersonal feature of the supreme, at, supreme advancement is very troublesome. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But those who worship me, giving up all their activities unto me, and being devoted to me without deviation, engaged in devotion service, and always meditating upon me, having fixed their minds upon me, O son of Pritha, for them I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. Just fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and engage all your intelligence in, uh, in me. Thus you will live in me always without a doubt. Hare Krishna. Text 9. My dear Arjuna, O winner of wealth, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulative principle of Bhakti Yoga. In this way, develop a desire to attain me. If you cannot practice the regulation of Bhakti Yoga, then just try to work for me. Because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. Hare Krishna. Uh, Aruni Mataji. So one quick question, Sonia and, and uh, Garima can't read, right? Sonia? Mataji, I can yes, read Sonia today. Mataji. Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji, I can also read. Okay, both of them can read. All right. And happy Kartik. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Happy Kartik. Hare Krishna. And, uh, yeah, Achita Radhe Dandat Pranams. So Sonia Mataji can go ahead. Yes. Okay, text, text number 10. Um, no, 9. 9, okay. Oh, my dear Arjuna, mm -hmm. a winner of wealth, if you, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. In this way, develop the desire to attain me. Text 10. If you cannot practice the regulations of Bhakti Yoga, then just try to work for me because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hmm. Text 11. If however you are unable to work in this consciousness of me, then try to act giving up all results of your work and try to be self-situated. Text 12. If you cannot take to this practice, then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, however, is meditation. Better than meditation is an enunciation of the fruits of action and for, and for by such renunciation, one can attain peace of mind. Aruni Mataji? X13 to 14. One who is not envious but is a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled and engaged in devotional service with determination. His mind and intelligence fixed on me such a devotee of mine is very dear to me text 15 he by whom no one is put into difficulty and who is not disturbed by anyone who is equipoised in happiness and distress fear and anxiety is very dear to me Hare Krishna text 16 my devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities who is pure expert without without cares free from all pains and not striving for some result is very dear to me text 17 one who neither rejoices nor grieves who neither laments nor des nor uh, nor desires and who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things such a devotee is very dear to me hare krishna sunya mataji uh, Hare Krishna Mataji. Uh, yeah. 1819. Yeah. Uh, the one who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equipoised in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contaminating association, always silent and satisfied with anything who doesn't care for any residents, who is fixed in knowledge, and who is engaged in devotional service, such a person is very dear to me. Thank you. 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 Thank
Fantastic. So what we'll do is in the interest of time. Mati ji, 20 is still remaining. Oh, still remaining. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought, okay. I just looked at that and got distracted. Okay, go ahead. Those who follow this imperishable path of devotion service and who completely engage themselves with faith, making me the supreme goal, are very dear to me. Hare Krishna. Are very, very dear to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, was, I was focusing on the reading order. <laughs> I, made it. I know. See how little the mind gets diverted and you get, you know, yeah. Yeah, Ativ me Priya, Ativ, the, in the yes. Sanskrit. Yes. Okay, so what I was saying was that in the interest of time, we could also just go and read one verse, right? Inside the chapter? Yes, sir. Right? And so who's. Yes, sir. We can read. Arjun Uvacha, Evam Satata Yukta, Ye. Very nice. Okay. Who's going for the synonyms? Uh, Sonia Mataji, your turn. Arjuna Vacha, Arjuna Sen, Evam Das, Satata, always Yukta, engaged, ye, those who Bhakta, Devotees, Twam, you, Prius, pa, Sate, properly worship, ye, those who, Cha, also, Api, again, Aksharam, beyond the senses, Avyakam, the animes, manifested, Tesam of them, K, who, Yoga with the Maha, the perfect in knowledge of yoga, the most perfect in knowledge of yoga. yoga. Translation, Arjuna inquired, which are considered to be more perfect, those who are always properly engaged in your devotional service or those who worship the impersonal Brahman, Brahman the unmanifested? Aruni Mataji? So this is such an important verse, right? Here straight away the question about if, whether God is personal or whether he is impersonal or both is addressed here. And actually, he's, he's actually uh, comparing, Arjuna's question is comparing the two and he's saying, now give me the answer. Who's considered to be more perfect? If you are an impersonalist or those who worship the personal form of the Lord, right? Your means like Krishna to you or those who worship the impersonal Brahman. And then Krishna will answer in this chapter. Purport. Krishna has now explained about the personal, the impersonal, and the universal, and has described all kinds of devotees and yogis. Generally, the transcendentalists can be divided into two classes. One is the impersonalist, and the other is the personalist. The personalist devotee engages himself with all energy in the service of the Supreme Lord. The impersonalist also engages himself not directly in the service of Krishna, but in meditation on the impersonal Brahman, the unmanifested. We find in this chapter that of the different processes for realization of the absolute truth, bhakti yoga, devotional service is the highest. If one at all desires to have the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then he must take to devotional service. Varshana Mataji, do you want to read? Uh, yes, Hare Krishna Mataji. Those who worship the Supreme Lord directly by devotional service are called personalists. Those who engage themselves in meditation on the impersonal Brahman are called impersonalists. Arjuna is here questioning which position is better. There are different ways to realize the absolute truth. But Krishna indicates in this chapter that bhakti yoga or devotional service to him is the highest of all. It is the most direct and it is easiest means for association with the Godhead. Hare Krishna. Uh, in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Lord explained that a living entity is not the material body, he is a spiritual spark. And the absolute truth is the spiritual whole. In the seventh chapter, he spoke of the living entity as being part and parcel of the Supreme Whole and recommended that. Um, <laughs> yeah, just one second, sorry. No, worries, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, that he transfers his attention fully to the whole. Then again in the 8th chapter, it was said that anyone who thinks of Krishna at the time of quitting his body <clears throat> is at once transferred to the spiritual sky, to the abode of Krishna, 
and at the end of the sixth chapter the lord clearly said that of all yogis one who always thinks of krishna within himself is considered the most perfect so in practical so in uh, practical in practically every situation chapter the conclusion has been that one should be attached to the person form of krishna for that is the highest spiritual realization hare krishna bolenga nevertheless there are those who are not attached to the personal form of krishna they are so firmly detached that even in the permanent in the preparation of commentaries to bhagavad gita they want to distract other people from krishna and transfer all devotion to the impersonal brahma jyotir they prefer to meditate on the impersonal form of the absolute truth which is beyond the reach of the senses and it's not manifest sunya mata ji so far and so far factually there are two classes of transcendentalist now arjuna is trying to settle the question of which process is easier and which of the class of the classes is most perfect in other words he is clarifying his own position because he is attracted to the personal form of krishna he is not attracted to the impersonal brahman he wants to know whether his position is secure impersonal the impersonal manifestation either in the is material world or in the spiritual world of the supreme lord is a problem for meditation actually one cannot perfectly conceive of the impersonal feature of the absolute truth therefore Kar- Kar- arjuna wants to say what is the use of such a waste of time arjuna experienced in the 11th chapter that to be attached to the personal form of krishna is best because he could thus be understood he could thus understand all other forms at the same time and there is no disturbance to his love for krishna the most important question also asked of krishna by arjuna will clarify the distinction mata ji could you please scroll up mm-hmm. between the impersonal between the impersonal and personal conceptions of the absolute truth hari krishna hari krishna okay so we'll stop here and take a few reflections you know i have a question <clears throat> when he says the impersonal meditation um you know a lot of people meditate on the light it's not necessarily that they're not um that they don't believe in a form of god or not but it's just that it's uh, it's easier to meditate on the light so do they is that what they mean by meditating on the brahma jyoti well um that's a question we'll have to ask them what they are saying but if, if a person is meditating yanti deva vrata yevan pritin yanti prativata bhutani yanti bhutaja yanti majya jino biman right so whatever you are meditating upon there you will go so if a person is meditating on brahma jyoti and um later on he will say krishna will say klesho adhik taras tesham avyakt asakta chetasam avyakta hi gatir dukham deh vadbhir avapsati so he will say actually to the contrary krishna says that it is very difficult for a person who is in a body like i am in a body right right now it's very difficult for me who has been associated with a uh, form all along right this is a form i am a form question is a form the pictures are form so i'm associated with the forms all around me for me to uh, concentrate and meditate on the impersonal something on to meditate on formless is very difficult so you will see that even those who are who are proponents of um, mayavad philosophy which you know ultimately you know starts from impersonalism and leads to the final snare snare of maya which says you actually are god so even they start off with saying that you can meditate on five and they say the five are ganesha surya you know krishna like jishnu like like that so they will pick up five but their uh, their approach is that we are just using them as a crutch till we find out that we are god and then we can drop them we don't have to do any prayers at all 
So it's not, it's not easy for, for us to meditate. And it really depends on the consciousness of a person, what he's actually meditating on, about, even while he's meditating on something which is light. Even if, like, you know, just close your eyes and meditate on light. What did you do? How will you do it? Right? You will imagine a candle. See, the moment you imagine a candle, a form has come there. So just to imagine a focus on just the light, light is difficult for us to do. Meditate on the sunlight, so there's a sun there, right? So that's just, that has got a form like that. So, um, so better not to go to um, uh, go to go towards that because very interesting verse is there in Shiman Bhagavatam. I let me just bring that up, and it is Shiman Bhagavatam four twenty three fifteen. It's it's in the place where uh, they are talking about um, Prithu Maharaj thing, and then there it is mentioned something there. So this is basically talking about how Prithu Maharaj gives us his gives up his body and and goes back, but in the purport, Prabhupada is explaining uh, here. Here, here. Why don't why don't why, why doesn't one of you read it? Whoever's turn is next. We don't see it. Sorry, it you're not sharing. <laughs> Sorry about that. I do that mistake all the time. Okay, so next up, yeah. It is start from here. When a living entity gives up the material coverings, when a, when a living entity gives up the material coverings, he remains a spirit soul. The spirit soul must enter into the spiritual sky to merge into the Brahman effulgence. Unfortunately, unless the living entity has information of the spiritual world and the Vaikuntas, there is 99.9% .9 chance of his falling down again into the material existence. There is, however, a small chance of being promoted to a spiritual planet from the Brahman effulgence or the Brahma Jyoti. The Brahma Jyoti is considered by impersonalist, impersonalist to be without variety and the Buddhists considered it to be void. In either case, whether one accepts the spiritual sky as being without variety or void, there is none of the spiritual bliss which is enjoyed in the spiritual planets, the Vaikuntas or Krishna Loka. In the absence of varieties of enjoyment, the spirit soul gradually feels an attraction to enjoy a life of bliss. And not having any information of Krishna Loka or Vakant Loka, he naturally falls down to matter of activities and in order to enjoy material varieties. So there you go. So Prabhupada is explaining why you should not focus on the impersonal. <coughs> Can we just see that line again? It says there's a small chance of... <laughs> <laughs> don't go for that small chance don't no, focus just, on that small chance <laughs> yeah there is a small chance if you are a very very perfected you know um, soul and some mercy happens and Narad Muni passes by and then he glances at you or something like that yeah there is a small chance here yeah, this one right uh, uh, Hare Krishna Mother. Hare Krishna uh, yes Mother. there is a small chance but uh, you see there is a um, a very big chance of falling down also. Yes. So it is better to, uh, to uh, you see, uh, have a form and, uh, you see, meditate on that form. Because <laughs> when you have a form in front of you, you will appreciate the beauty, you will appreciate uh, many other things, uh, and then you will remember all the leelas. So your attraction towards uh, the form will be uh, um, much in a serious manner as compared to the Brahma Jyoti. Yeah, serious and more effective, right? It'll more be more effective. effective yeah, that yeah. you'll be, you will be able I to think about. Krishna. Yes, if you're if you're saying that that you have to meditate on Krishna twenty four by seven, how do you meditate, right? So if there's a form, then you can think about the form. You can just meditate on the form twenty four by seven. It's so beautiful. Actually, after your class, I went to another meeting and that picture was still showing. So we, <laughs> in my second meeting, I spent some time <laughs> admiring the picture. It was like so beautiful, isn't it? And this was just, we were looking at Vishnu, it doesn't, who doesn't even expect all of Krishna. So imagine how Krishna, beautiful Krishna is. So, um, and here's the interesting thing, Aruni Mataji, that this is what Maya does. <laughs> It'll make you focus on like, oh, but there's but this, but that 0.1 person chance. Let me try this now. <laughs> I mean, I, I just want to know all the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I'm and... just saying, yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, this is how the mind will go. <laughs> and Maya will go. And on a weaker moment, Maya will just take over. And says, so, you remember says, that 4.23.15? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a little chance there. But, yeah. but it also says that if you, um, it, whether you, you focus on the light as the void or the, uh, what is the other one? 
the void or um, the, this, this call it the, this call the it light. Void, right yeah void yeah. or light uh, you you're not able to uh, you're not able right. to perceive or enjoy the other thing right. so that means the senses are very important you're not trying to kill the senses so as you go up your you're always attached to the senses you know yes you are attached to the senses the senses get purified actually the senses will then start focusing on uh atmendriya priti krishnendra priti so they will start focusing on satisfying krishna's senses and the beauty of that and prabhupad gives an example that if you sit in the front of a mirror and you start decorating your own face the picture in the mirror also looks very beautiful so if similarly if you start satisfying krishna's senses then our senses also because we are a reflection our senses also get satisfied satisfied but the essence to remember is that we are in the 15th chapter we were reading that we are parts and parcel of krishna right mame vanshu jeeva loke 15th chapter we read so here it is coming back again to first verse of brahma samhita that we are reading on saturdays it says ishvara parama krishna satchidananda vigraha so sat chit and anand so he is a form of bliss so there is bliss in krishna and if i if i am derived from krishna i will have that tendency to enjoy and krishna is a supreme enjoyer i also have this enjoying tendency and if i am not able to enjoy it in the brahma jyoti like you pointed out arinimadhi ji that i will just go wherever i know that there is happiness which and my recollection even is even you know you have to have the senses oh yes oh yes yes and so you but you the senses are only gathering the information for you right and then performing certain actions but the ultimate enjoyer is the soul the soul ultimately enjoys it because uh, senses are nothing but dull, dull matter in bhagavad gita it says lowest of all are the senses of the senses is the Um, the alloy is the dull matter. Above the dull matter are the senses. Above the senses is the mind. Above right. mind is the intelligence. Above the intelligence is the soul, and above the soul is the super soul, like that. Yeah, but yes. So these senses are only will get purified, and they become transcendental as you continue to you know perform more and more devotional service. And that is why, as people in, advance in devotional services, they don't get affected too much by the material, because you might. Be- that is what the fifth verse also says right those whose mind are attached yes. to the manifest the impersonal feature is very mm-hmm. uh, like impersonal feature of the supreme advancement is troublesome but to make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied and we are embodied soul uh, of yes. krishna yes. it is so, difficult yeah 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 it is difficult klesho adhiktara stesham avyakta asakta chetasam avyakta hi gatir dukham krishna is saying avyakta means impersonal dukham dukham don't go and go there it's going to give you trouble it's going to give you trouble like that yeah mm. so, mata ji one time can we spend time on understanding what is krishna indriya priti and atma indriya priti oh atma because... means your atma means yours and priti is attachment or love right so atma indriya priti means i have a desire to satisfy my senses and versus krishna indriya priti means a desire to satisfy krishna's senses basically for example if you want to cook something right so i can cook mm-hmm. all kinds of things for me i like this so i want to eat i like this i want to cook this i like meat yes eggs yes alcohol yes give me all that but then mm-hmm. if you're saying krishna and the apriti like no 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 krishna doesn't like garlic krishna doesn't like this krishna doesn't like that and then then when you start cooking for krishna then then you know you are actually trying to satisfy his senses and the beauty is that in the process of trying to satisfy his senses our senses get set satisfied okay right okay. and we have come very close to 7 o'clock i'll be you know they'll start joining this call <laughs> probably all right thank you mataji yeah vanchi kalpatru vyascha kripa sindhu vyeva cha patikana paavyo vaishnavi i'm just thinking that during kartik week maybe we can pause the study of chapter 2 and continue in 12 and pick up verse every day from 12 does it mean very nice some point of time mataji read sanskrit also once uh, once in a yes week. it's beautiful sanskrit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yes yeah fantastic that will be nice so uh, those of you who are watching us here on facebook including now vijay lakshmi mathur ji and preeti also who joined us happy kartik month for you keep up your kartik vow make them realistic vows and we will meet again tomorrow monday at 7 pm pacific standard pacific standard time now we are on standard yes time. okay so i'm starting the live stream over here and i will 8:30 am